The continent of Mudos, specifically Western Mudos, is an area of the planet Oddworld and was first explored in the fourth game in the series, titled Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. It's a dry and arid place, with a desert climate, and is rife with crime. It has many parallels to the Old West of the USA, on planet Earth. But this unforgiving environment still hosts a great many life forms, both sapient and otherwise. Much like the eastern part of the continent, an industrial society exists here, though the western region is considerably less developed than its eastern counterpart. The Mongo River runs right through western Mudos. The source of the Mongo is Ma Spa, the birthplace of the Gabits, native to eastern Mudos. There are several settled areas along the river, such as Last Legs, Dusty Hollow, and Buzzerton, as well as New York City. Of course, if there are settlements, then there would surely be life forms who inhabit them. The Steef, for example, is a mammal native to Western Mudos. These noble creatures, legendary among the other species in the region, are critically endangered. The Steef is centaur-like, with the lower body of a horse, though with giraffe-like proportions. It has cloven hooves. The torso is gorilla-like, and it has a human-like face on a lion-like head. They are an intelligent species, tribal but sapient, and throughout history have served as warriors, guardians, mercenaries, and would have taken on other roles that required bravery, strength, and durability. There are other sapient species in West Mudos that worship the Steefs for their legendary past deeds, and for the protection they provided them. Evidence of this can be seen in cave paintings found across the region. They used to live in herds before their numbers dwindled. While there are now only a few left in existence, the Steefs of the past were highly social. The industrialist races of West Mudos have sadly hunted the Steefs almost to extinction to make a variety of meat products. The Clackers are a sapient avian species, resembling a chicken mixed with a pig, and are native to this area of Mudos. They are an industrialist species and also serious consumers, one of the target demographics who buy the meat products, like those made from Steefs, created by local industry. They tend to be between 5 and 6 feet in height, with a great many bird-like features, their orange beaks and feathered limbs being the most obvious examples of this. They also have three-toed feet. They do not possess the ability to fly, however, so their wings are simply used as arms, with the feathers at the ends serving as fingers. They have non-avian features too, like their short, curly tails that resemble that of a pig's. They also have visible ears that sit on top of their heads, quite unbird-like, and the nostrils above the base of their beaks resemble a pig's snout. However, unlike pigs or chickens, the clackers have forward-facing eyes, a noted trait of carnivorous predators and humans, providing them with binocular vision. They walk upright like humans too. The female clackers lay eggs, however, and so are not mammals. The clackers are almost certainly descended from birds, much like the Mudokans on the other side of the continent. Maybe the clackers and the Mudokans are distant relatives. The slegs are a non-sapient dog-like species and extremely similar to the slogs found in East Mudos. It's likely these are a different breed of the same creature or very closely related. The slegs are larger and broader than the slogs. And like the slogs who are loyal to their slig owners, the slegs are loyal to their outlaw and wolvark owners. These creatures are, like the slogs, vicious and should be avoided if possible. They can be found scattered along the Mongo River and, when dry, the Mongo Valley. The grubs are an amphibian, near-threatened, sapient species who live peacefully along the Mongo River, which is their primary water source. They are salamander-like in lifestyle and appearance. These are the beings who worship the now-endangered, previously mentioned Steefs, who had taken a liking to the small and helpless grubs and would protect their settlements from threats. They're tribal in lifestyle and live in small villages along the river. 
Due to the nearby clackers expanding their settlements outwards and other industrialist species moving in on their territory to acquire resources, the grub population, like that of the Steefs, is dwindling. They seem to be fairly advanced, or at least were at one point, as the settlement known as Last Legs is a grub city, quite possibly the last one in existence. The majority, however, seem to live in small fishing villages. Much like the Madokans of the East, the grubs live a highly religious life, worshipping nature and specifically the different spirits that inhabit it. Their personal favourite is the river spirit, and they also revere the upstream journey of the gabbits to their spawning grounds at Mars Bar, the source of the Mongo River. The grubs, despite their peaceful way of life, are known to be ferocious combatants when threatened. The wolvarks are an industrialist species and serve as security for the various factories and processing facilities found in the region. In many ways, they are a lot like the sligs found in East Mudos. Like the sligs, the wolvarks are sadistic, cruel and small-minded, deriving great pleasure from the suffering they inflict on other species. They possess intelligence in the way that other sapient species do, able to use tools and speech, usually in the forms of weapons and threats. They have a reptilian appearance, with green or beige skin and beady eyes. They have small ears protruding from the sides of the head, and often have warts on their faces. They also have an underbite and small, sharp teeth. The wolvarks are exceedingly cruel, arguably more sadistic than the sligs, as the wolvarks have been known to impale the grubs, who they have been employed to harass and bully, onto wooden pikes. This happens when they've been caught fishing after a ban on fishing in their own waters had been placed on them by the psychopathic boss of the local Secto Spring Bottled Water Company. The Octogai is a cephalopod, squid-like in appearance, and a part of the similarly named Octogai family. As far as I'm aware, they're pronounced the same way, but then again I'm not exactly renowned for my accurate pronunciations. Anyone who's ever listened to my audiobooks here on YouTube can attest to that. Being a part of the Octagai family means they're closely related to the Gluckens, who inhabit East Mudos, and share many of their characteristics. Unlike the Gluckens, though, the Octagai are primarily aquatic, but are able to survive on dry land through the use of a host body. They're parasitic in lifestyle, and attach themselves to a victim's head to gain control over its body. Much like the Gluckens, they're greedy, obsessed with wealth and power, and are not afraid to steamroll over any person or species that goes against their business interests. They're also fond of expensive cigars and sharp suits. Among the many cave and rock paintings found across Western Mudos, the Octagai can be seen doing battle with the Steef and the Grubs in many of them. The Glocktagai, unlike the other life forms that make Western Mudos their home, are not natural beings. They're entirely artificial, though they are alive. They're found all across Western Mudos, wherever there is water. They were created by the Octagai by combining their DNA with that of the Gluckens to create something new and terrifying. This was done through genetic engineering and alchemy. Magic does indeed exist on Oddworld, as was stated in the previous video when discussing the Madokan's meditation and possession abilities. It would seem that some form of dark magic was utilised during the creation of the Glocktagai. They also use these otherworldly abilities to transform themselves into spectre-like forms, which allow them to move around the world in a ghostly way. While unnatural, they are considered a part of the Octagai family. They are much larger than their fellow family members who created them, and have slate grey skin. Their legs, like the Gluckens, are vestigial, and their arms are hypertrophied. They don't have hands like the Gluckens, however, instead walking on the tips of three sharp claws on each of their two arms. These claws are also used as weapons, which are used to impale their victims. Its head takes up the majority of its body mass. Its body is much smaller. It has ruby-coloured eyes and six tentacle-like mandibles that hang from its mouth. Their heads also contain all of their organs. Their brains are massive, and this makes them one of the deadliest creatures to exist in the region, possibly on all of Oddworld. 
The Mudos continent is also home to a number of strange critters, and while much smaller than the other animals found here, such as the scrabs, paramites and slegs, are no less deadly. Many of these are considered pests. They seem to come in many varieties, but most seem to be comprised of a round blob covered with fur, though some have additional extremities. Notable examples of these creatures include the fuzzles, the chip punks, the stunks, and the boom bats. They're mammalian and all possess teeth, some razor sharp. Some, like the boom bat, have wings, while others, like the stunks and chip punks, are just a furry ball with eyes and a tail, and teeth. While these creatures should be considered extremely dangerous, those odd-world inhabitants who possess a natural harmony with nature should be able to coexist with them, and even get them to follow as companions, or even use them as vicious projectiles against their enemies. There is also a vast array of bug life, examples of these being the sting bee, the sniper wasp, the bolomite, the thud slug, and the zap fly. These, too, can be used by one who is at ease within the wilds of West Mudos. They can all be found across the region, and all the way up and down the Mongo River. Western Mudos is just as fascinating as the eastern part of the continent, and Oddworld itself is undoubtedly a bizarre place. But like I said last time, it's definitely one of the best examples of world building I've ever seen. Beyond the main characters of the games, there are a great number of fully fleshed out species. Some are just animals doing their thing, some are natives who live tribal lives, and others are industrialists, much like the ones we have in our world, filled with greed and a lust for power and control. And of course, there are the environments themselves, of which many could, if you'll pardon the cliché, be described as characters themselves. The dark, grim and mechanised rupture farm setting of the first game has a distinct feel of its own, with a unique atmosphere that has certainly left a massive imprint on my mind. And the same can be said for the Wild West setting of the fourth game in the series, which was the area covered in this video. It's completely different to what we had seen before, but there can be no question that it takes place within the same world. These games had a shared universe before it was cool. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Next week's video is going to be something rather different, a new world, where we'll take a look at its environments and the biology of its own creatures. So, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, share it around and leave a comment with your thoughts, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you're interested in speculative evolution and biology, weird sci-fi, and other cool things in a similar vein. I'm starting to branch out quite a bit now with the topics I cover, so pretty soon there should be something here to suit everyone. And also, I'd like to say a massive thank you to all of my members and patrons who can be seen here. And if you haven't yet done so, please consider becoming a patron by visiting the link in the description. This has been Beware the Q, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.